Awesome. Got it. Uh, can you pause it and then we'll start it in 10 minutes? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I see some familiar faces. This is so good. <laughs> I haven't seen in a while. Fatima, I think I saw a few faces. Who else? Uh, Lindy, I see NF. Louisa, hi. <laughs> it's so good to see some familiar faces. Okay. Which means you guys already know the ropes uh, of how this is going to work out. It's not going to be nice at the beginning, but we're going to get our ducks in the room. Welcome, entrepreneurs. We are getting ready. I'm just accepting a few more that are coming through. Give me a second, and then we will start. Two more minutes. It seems like people are just joining at the last minute, uh, but we are accepting them. Okay, welcome. I am so looking forward for this. Uh, we are already on recording, uh, so I just didn't want to get disrupted by the people joining late. Maybe, Sis Nomvio, you're going to help me to actually accept them, and then I can move along on what we have to cover for today. Those who uh, might be struggling with the audio, please just get uh, the presentation. It is quite long, it's about 50 slides or so. So please just uh, bear with us. We, we try to put the information and condense it as, as much as we could, but we couldn't. So I'm gonna just uh, share my slide on my side so that we can start. Uh, this is not the right one. Okay. Oops. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Please confirm that you have you can see my slide. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Great. Uh, welcome and thank you so yes, much for did. making it on time. Uh, we are always going to be starting at half past four. In my shelf, though, I had a four o'clock, so I was already in at quarter to half past to try to get ready. So apologies for that, but we should be fine going forward. Okay. Uh, today is the orientation day. We are kicking off a fun ready program. You are called you are called one of four. Uh, we will be having a additional intake in January uh, to roll out the program. Uh, we really would like to say thank you so much for making a time and uh and building in in uh, I mean there were so many documents we needed to analyze and review in this. And uh, 358 people are uh, actually attended uh, to be interested in this program. Only 100 entrepreneurs were actually shortlisted and you are one of those 100 uh, entrepreneurs that actually we were able to see that there is a potential for them, for us to assist them. I have already analyzed some of your responses 
from the questions that were asked. Uh, let me just say I was not happy with some of the responses. It will seem as though majority of us as we were applying or as we were completing, we wanted a business skills. Uh, this is not for just a business skill. This is for someone who's looking for funding. This is someone who wants to say, Precious, I've done strategy, I've done my business plan, but now how do I make sure that this is attractive enough to the funder or to the anyone who might be interested, whom can actually be invested? But we're going to work through that to try to actually make sure that everyone is on the same level. Remember, our, um, our effort is really going to be about how much you are putting in. But also, I wanted to say thank you so much for putting the time. It was a lot of things to actually put together. And yeah, and you belong to the 25% literally based on what we have actually tested the market on. Uh, who am I? Uh, I, I, I? So that you know who's going to be hosting you in this process. Uh, my name is Precious Mvulani. I'm the mom of three. I have written uh, several books, but uh, only two have been published. Uh, um, I'm still working on that to finish a few more. Uh, and I, I, I am actually got about 20 some odd years experience in both private sector and public sector. I'm also a nine executive director in nine entities, including both private sector and public sector. I really like um, assisting entrepreneurs in achieving their goals. And I love working with entrepreneurs and money uh, because I'm, I really believe that provides you a freedom. So welcome to this program and those who actually uh, is the first time they're meeting me. But I did see some quite a lot of familiar faces in this group, some coming from the NEF program, some come from other programs that we have ran before. Okay, um, yeah, that's a book that I've written. You can actually have a look at more details on my background and the institutions that I sit in as a board member. I think you will get that from the slides. If you need additional more information, please go to my LinkedIn account. Uh, I, I am your course creator and also facilitator. Uh, and I think that's it about me. <laughs> If you have questions, you can uh, pose those questions uh, in the chat box. This number will stop me to actually just uh, as we are actually running the program. Um, I just also want to indicate that um, I, I'm a founder of GAG Consulting, uh, who basically uh, is the reason why we're here. GAG was created really to empower people to build uh, ecosystems, to help each other, because I myself needed help as an entrepreneur when I was starting. And I felt that as much as I had education and experience in business, whatever that I had learned in business classes or in business schools really did not solve my problems. So I began this journey to solve it with you and work with you. I am not gonna try to uh, come across as though I will know every answer to the questions you're going to have, but instead what I will do, I will bring people on our platforms to be able to explain certain things that I cannot explain. But what I also want to take an opportunity is to say, we all want to raise these funds and us as JD, we also are in that process. Uh, about a year ago, we raised 2.5 million and now we are actually in a journey to raise about 10 million. So I really am looking forward for you to join this process because it will help you and ourselves to refine our systems and processes on how to actually assess funds. We have spoken to several funders uh, about the challenges that you as entrepreneurs, as us as entrepreneurs are actually experiencing when we are funding. And we have tried by all means to bridge the gap of that. And we are working very hard to make sure that we are building the system that will allow you so that you use that system all the time, whether you are applying for short term or whether you are applying for long term. 
We have a database of grants. We have a database of funders for short-term and working capital, including factored financing, including also different uh, types of funding. But we've got to need to make sure that as a startups, we are very clear from the onset on how we will actually raise the capital. Because in other instances, sometimes we might say we're looking for working capital, but the, our finances are not allowing us to raise the working capital. So those are the things that we're gonna go in. So you need to have your financial statements ready. You must make sure that you understand your figures and your numbers. And if you do have a challenge with some of those things, you will need to come back to us. We have a platform that will also allow you to actually maybe uh, take it bite by bite on the financial literacy part. So because we will not look at the financial literacy part, we will really be looking at it in terms of where can you get money? How can you actually raise the money with the current status of your finances? Okay, so that is really about GAD and um, uh, uh, um, our core values are, are around those um, six issues. I don't wanna go in detail. You can read that uh, at your own time uh, at a later stage. What I want to do now is to allow this number to actually uh, present herself and introduce herself. She is my co-host. We have ran up similar programs together. Uh, so she will give you her, her role, plus uh, as I had articulated my role. Uh, Sisnam, will you please come through? Mm. Hi, everyone. Um, we are very excited to have you. Uh, we know, I know that you are going to learn a lot from this session. Over the 13 weeks, you are going to learn a lot. Uh, my name is Nom Vuyo Bengane. I, I call myself the oil lady. And most people ask if I've got an oil business and I say, no, I don't have an oil business, but I work with oil. And the oil I work with is the inner greatness inside you as an entrepreneur. So that's what I do. I'm a business coach and I love supporting entrepreneurs as well. Today, I'm supporting our main entrepreneur <laughs> and I'm playing a role of uh, co-hosting, looking at your comments and reflecting on what she says and feeding it back to you just to make our session lively so please, if you have questions, ask in the chat. If you have questions, ask. We are going to answer you. Uh, I'm really here to be uh, to make things run smooth so that Precious can do what she needs to do and you guys can also be able to get as much value from her as possible. Thank you so much, Sister Mbuyo. And then I'm gonna then just skip the introduction of JT and what we do. Uh, yeah, and the awards we have received, I will just skip all of that. You can get that. Our clientele that we have, the current and previous. Um, yeah, I wanna stick with this for a second. While you may go and have a look at my profile on LinkedIn, uh, what you will not find in any profile of any business or of any individual person, you will not see my failures. That's a problem with CVs. Our CVs only just put what is good, what I've achieved. I just wanna say to you, as much as I have uh, been learning business and starting business since I was 14 years old, I had nine failed businesses. In the past 12 months, I'm close to actually be at the risk of 1 million loss. And if you want detail on how did I make a mess here, 1 million, I will share that with you on our WhatsApp group. Uh, and even in this current business, when I started, this was an auditing firm and it has changed its picture. It's, it's what it does. Uh, I mean, look at what it does now. 
as compared from an auditing firm to that. <laughs> because I think what I just want to highlight to you is that this is not a journey of, uh, uh, of people with uh, uh, a lighthearted or people that do not have to have, you need to have a perseverance. You need to actually understand that you're going to actually fail several times before you win. How you decide whether you are quitting today or you're quitting tomorrow, tomorrow, it doesn't really matter. I generally say that I quit every day. Say, what the heck did I do to my career? <laughs> but I don't literally quit. I just get disappointed in myself for having not seen it or understood it or have not seen this coming. But then because I am growing every day, I then realize I'm not the same person I was the day before yesterday. So the aim of growth is really about having a mindset growth that says, yes, I didn't get it at the first time and I might not get it the second time. No, am I not gonna get it maybe third, fourth, seventh time, but I'm not gonna give up on my, on my goals. I'm not gonna give up on my mission. I'm not gonna give up on the things that God has placed in my heart. So, and because if I do give up on that, I will be basically be giving up on myself. So you have to somehow understand that most of us are a first generation entrepreneurship. My children are gonna be a second generation. Uh, to tell you the truth, my aunt still asks me to do this day, when am I going back to work? <laughs> It's 30 years later, you know, so we, we, we have to understand that as we are building ourselves, we will make mistakes. We just need to put systems and processes around ourselves to make sure that the failure is not so bad that you actually have to shut down. You actually now have to restart all over again or whatever that you are building uh, is, is is worthless. You have to make sure what you are building has a value to somebody else so that you are able to actually sell the idea to that person or be able to have some sort of value exchange in it. So I see that there are people who are running late. Sister Nubia, are you able to accept them? Okay, I have accepted them because it's a little bit disturbing. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me then, so I wanted just to share with you that, um, yeah, this is, this, the, the, this is not easy and it's not going to be easy because we have started it, but it's, it, it, and it doesn't matter what type of education you have. I, I, I have been in business for years and I've been doing business for years as, as a director. And I work with people that are in business. I've audited businesses. All I just want to say to you, it's no guarantees. It, it's not a guarantee that you will actually not fail. You could actually even have mentors and coaches around you that are helping you. You will still fail in one way or the other. You just need to manage that failure and make sure it does, it does not break you to a point that you shut down. Okay, so... On that note, why are we here today? Today is orientation. One is to encourage the engagement, is to make sure that we're building a learning community, uh, and also to make sure that you have joined both groups in terms of WhatsApp. We have a participant discussion, where as an entrepreneur, you can actually put in comments and, and engage with us, but there is one where we're just only just putting the notice. Please make note that on the notice, you are not allowed to put any comments, only administrators and um, the team that can actually be able to engage. But in addition to that, we really wanted to make sure that you are familiar with, with how we will actually work and what is the program about, plus also uh, introduce myself to those that don't know me. And also just make sure that we introduce each other as you were joining, some of you were actually uh, already putting in their chat box, introducing themselves. 
please take note uh, of, of other entrepreneurs that are in this space because one of the things as entrepreneurs that we fail to do is collaborate working together. We don't have anything except ourselves. And I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, oh, we also wanted to make sure that there's a clarity on what are the goals, what are the expectations, and how, how to make sure that we meet the targets that we have that in 13 weeks from now, you must have at least five funders that you have shortlisted, that you have you understand their, their requirements and you have prepared for their requirements. So that I will then use that top five um, uh, to invite them to come and present their products and services and also see if we can bring them for you to pitch your business because we want you to get the money because we know there is money in South Africa. But we also wanted to do this uh, orientation to motivate you, uh, to set a positive tone that uh, that they, they, you're gonna need to understand that to get something, you're gonna give up something. I saw some of you were already saying, oh, I'm load shedding. And I was also load shedding as you were, you were joining. <laughs> it cut me off. I didn't, I couldn't go through it. So, but we make a plan and say, this no voya, you will do the recording. I will try to do the recording on this side. So it's, it's everyone, we're gonna need to live with what we have and figure out a way how to make the environment suit us so that we can achieve our goals. And uh, the main aim, as I said, is to help you to understand this is not just about a business skills, a brand business skills program. I don't want this to be about business skills program. I want it to be about you having your top five funders on your list, have your pitch uh, deck done and a, a full business plan that actually you can actually use to go to the market. So yes, welcome to uh, to orientation. I also wanted you to make sure that you have informed, you actually build the connections with us. You will also clarify any questions, but we also deal with rules of engagement. So the rules of engagement will apply in one, the WhatsApp groups that you, we have created are not for you to post anything other than what is related to the program. Uh, and so as much as we know you are promoting your products and services, please refrain from that. We will allow that opportunity at a later stage for networking and end. Plus also you won't be working in groups. Each time when we come to a session, we'll have a first 30 minutes where I do uh, questions from your side and I provide answers, but then the next hour you will be in rooms, a group of 10. So we're gonna have 10 groups, which we call the mastermind groups. In those groups, we have tried by all means to put the different sectors together, but also people that seem to understand and know what they're doing based on the quality of their responses, put those people together so that we are pulling each other from one level. So, and that is important entrepreneurs because you will then learn from other people, not just uh, from us. And again, we want to make sure that it's very clear where and where you're going to get the material and how the material is actually going to be done, including your assignments. Uh, and as I said, we really want to make sure that we provide you with all the assistance and some of the things that we're going to be saying and engaging on will be picking up things and weaknesses on your things. Please don't take that personal. That's the role we want to play to actually indicate to you, fill up this gap, fill up this gap. There's still a problem there. Work through this and we will then assist you why that is important so that you actually wire your mind and review how you are actually looking at things. Okay, uh, okay. Now, we're gonna have 12 investor host interviews. I don't know whether they will say yes or no. I have reached out to them. The ones that I know are automatically gonna be on our list as black entrepreneurs. 
I do not know if they're gonna say yes or no. I'm of a view though, that you gonna need to convince your funders to actually come and join us, especially the ones that have actually rejected you previously. So, and we have worked out some sort of a tool or system on how we're gonna make sure we get them to actually come. Uh, funding Connections has already confirmed uh, and we also have confirmed with profit funders. We are actually now finalizing with uh, CIFA, IDC, AF. So there is ones that are already on the pipeline. So just keep in mind the processes and systems that we have put in place, which will allow us to be able to have this. Those who actually um, uh, on LinkedIn, they can actually see that I have posted on LinkedIn and I will share again on the WhatsApp, uh, the um, my LinkedIn post that I had shared. Please share that link that LinkedIn and then tag uh, any of the funders that you are actually targeting because we want to bring them on board to help us maneuver around their applications so that we deal with the problems up front. Okay, so what's the objective of this course? Okay, really uh, for this program, we're focusing to allow you to understand uh, how debt and also equity funding works, including also uh, crowdfunding, uh, including also angel investors and, and so different types of funding. Number two, we also want to deal with what is the normal reasons we generally get uh, rejected. We also want to make sure that we work through the seven C's of credit. If you are not meeting the requirements of seven C's of credit, we then need to develop a plan on how to address those gaps. We will also look at the one page strategy, which should be formulated from your pastel, your fire forces of Porter and SWOT analysis. Again, entrepreneurs, I am not gonna go deep onto these things. All I'm just gonna be asking is to have that one page. And I will pick up from looking at that one page if you actually have gone through the process uh, of getting a proper SWOT analysis for your industry, making sure that your pastel is actually analyzed to your environment, the five porters, and then the SWOT analysis, which then allow you to then draw your one page strategy. We'll be using um, balance scorecard. Again, entrepreneurs, if the words I'm mentioning uh, are not, you are not familiar with them, then you, <laughs> Google is gonna be your best friend. But I will provide some sort of a content in uh, to allow you to be able to see. Uh, since number one, there seem to be someone drawing stuff on my thing. Did, did you I'm see that? I'm wondering what it is. I thought it's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just uh, there's always uh, a risk with uh, Zoom in terms of security. I thought they had improved the security, but let's see how this works out. Okay, we will, once we have done the one page strategy, we'll then review and analyze your go to market strategy. Uh, what, are, what, are, what are, is it that you're going to do that meets your customer profile? From that, you then have to update your business plan for both short term and long term, and then uh, make sure that the financial model is actually talking to that. And we will then also cover. Uh, in that financial model, it has to be very clear. What is it that these projections mean and what's the basis of those projections? And there's so many mistakes that we make as entrepreneurs when we are doing these projections. We usually use some Excel spreadsheet somewhere without understanding and keeping in mind that one, the assumptions must be relevant. Number two, the assumptions that you are talking about on your business model, you must have considered them on your SWOT analysis. Um, you must also have a baseline. So there is almost like quite a few things that we're gonna need to work on when we're actually doing a business model. But that business model is basically based on your business plan and um, your, 
yeah, I don't know what's happening. Someone is drawing stuff on the presentation. <laughs> anyway, and then you we will conduct a financial analysis. Now, we we'll conduct the financial analysis on your current financial statements, where we're highlighting the key risk within your financial statements so that we ask ourselves, is your business ready for equity fund? Is your business ready for debt? Is it just a grant? Because when you do not understand what your financial statements are saying, you might actually approach the wrong fund because you don't understand what does these figures mean. So the interpretation of your ratios. And we will also look at based on where you are in terms of your finances, plus your projections, who is actually the potential fund and how you actually should approach them. From that, you then gonna prepare a pitch deck and elevator speech, and then on how you actually gonna do the presentation. We will then take you through the process where we are now working through the negotiation and deals, and then also deal with the post investment uh, strategies for the exit. That will be after they have actually given you the money. This will also cover how you report quarterly. And some of you are CEOs, but the way your reports are structured are not at the CEO level. I usually say, entrepreneurs usually say I'm a direct, but there's nothing that they are directing. So we'll work on that. Uh, I, I'm not sure, should I stop here a bit uh, and, and take if there's any questions, Sisnam Vuya? Yeah, please uh, let's ask some questions. Um, I think mine is you mentioned five top five uh, in uh, investors or funders, and then you mentioned twelve that are going to be interviewed. How does that work? So. The top five funders, those each entrepreneur that is in this program should actually have that short list for themselves. Mm -hmm. That is that should be their tangible. That should be what they expect from this program. That at the end of it, they should have five funders that they have shortlisted. The 12 that I'm gonna bring on board are based on those five that the entrepreneurs, there's gonna be ones that are common. But I wanted to have 12 because we're going to run this program over the next 12, 13 weeks, actually. And that is why I wanted, so each week I interview one, each week I interview one. We've already set up the link uh, or on what questions they should expect. So I will just share that on our LinkedIn account, entrepreneurs, so that you will then see what I had already posted when I was uh, doing it over the weekend. Clear. Yeah, are there any questions? Do you understand uh, so far? I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Okay, let me move on. We have quite a big slide. So if okay. there are no questions, that's good. Okay, what is your deliverable? What do we expect? What is it that when we give you the certification of attendance, we will have expected from you? We expect from you eight things. You must have done your pastel, your SWOT analysis, your five forces of, of Porter, your business model canvas, your one-page strategy with four goals, minimum four goals, and then your full business plan. Try not to exceed 40 pages with a financial model, pitch deck with different forms. So a uh, pitch deck will have an elevator speech, will also have your your one page in relation to a presentation. Uh, we will give you some templates of these things, plus your due diligence checklist. Your due diligence checklist is basically saying, uh, I've got all my papers in one, and we're gonna show you one or, or few tools that you can use to make sure that your information is all in one place, but also it's referenced correctly so that anytime when a funder asks you for information, it's easier for you to just get it or share the link. Okay, so that is um, the brief of what we're expecting from you, the expectation. 
And the yeah, calls uh, upline. There's a question. Yeah, can you please make me co-host? What happened to you? Because you were a host. <laughs> yeah, <I> remember <laughs> when I when I when I was kicked off by load shedding, then I came back and it. <laughs> okay. Okay. And we are both still recording because in case we have not shedding. <laughs> okay, great. So week one, debt funding, equity grant, alternative funding, reasons for rejections, and preparation for the seven Cs, whether it's equity, investor, or grant, right? Week number two, we're going to review the markets, and that will mean we're looking at external factors. That means we're looking at the market potential your competitive landscape, that means we're looking at both internal and external factors that will affect your value proposition and also your canvas, but also your scale strategies and tactics, then leading to your one-page strategy. Please make sure on your one-page strategy is very clear what will be your project or initiatives and what will be the metrics, metrics being your key performance indicators. Week number three, we're basically updating now the business plan. We're making sure that you have all the components. You will have a checklist of which components you're supposed to have. You also need to make sure that you have a system that you create to assist you to keep your business plan up to date. Uh, we suggest that you should do that every quarter. We also will make sure that you somehow build up uh, some sort of a, a slide, updating of your slides in building in that uh, business plan, plus also making sure that you have opportunities for to get some of our instructors who's gonna come on board to assist. Uh, I've negotiated with Dagma, who's a specialist in business plan crafting, to come and actually present on that week. She will also provide you guys with a voucher where you will actually be able to pay a, a very low reduced price. So yeah, that's one of the things we will do to make sure that you get the support you need. Week four, we will do business financial model. And we will also talk about how you will actually negotiate and work through the items. Uh, and then we will also work on understanding the financial statements. I think I've already explained this in more detail, but the most important is understanding the red flags and then I have a system on how you intend to address those red flags. Uh, and then you will then have uh, the investment evaluation techniques on how the investors and funders evaluate investment uh, in terms of qualitative and quantitative, including risk analysis. Okay, return on investment, uh, you will also understand how decision-making models are reviewed, how you then reduce and manage the portfolio, including building up your investment plan. Because I think one of the things that we generally also do as entrepreneurs, we forget that we ourselves are investors as shareholders. Therefore, we need to build uh, a way of managing the portfolio and the exposure risk, which is aligned to our investment plans. Okay, the pitching part must be visual, the identification of the key message, the storytelling leading to your elevator speech, the best practicing will also share some of the tools from the AI that will help you to make your, your, your presentation look very crisp and nice. We will then make sure that you present in your peer groups on your mastermind group to present your pitch and they then sit in and critique based on what they have learned and taught so that you crystallize it and get more comfortable. We're of a view that if we find really good business plan, we'll bring those funders to actually come and hear your pitch, but you're really gonna need to put some work in. Due diligence, this is where we're gonna be working on what are the things that the funders are gonna be looking for, the requirements, plus also organize, uh, organizing your documentation, whether that is legal or financial information, operations, including the technology and human resources. So those are the things that you're gonna need to put in place.
why am I being muted now? Someone is playing games on us. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> it was not meant to mute you, hey? Somebody is playing games. Are you, are, are you muted? No. No, no I was watching the people who are coming second. through. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Not Some, you. When we are actually building up the due diligence, the aim is to create a system for you to get a document within a second uh, and also to get your team to know where to find the information, those who have teams. Okay, again, we will also talk about uh, capacitating uh, to make sure that you build up the teams. Okay, so the restructuring is really uh, on the deal is about the tactics and negotiations and also understanding your net worth and your value into the market. I think as entrepreneurs, black entrepreneurs, we generally undervalue what we are actually bringing on board. Uh, Post-investment, this is very important because this is really about keeping the relationship on, making sure that uh, you, you align with uh, your, your funders, but also when there's additional opportunity in any other in their ecosystem, they know who, what you stand for and your it's really around integrity also to manage this relationship but also to position yourself as a strategic partner going forward and uh, i think one of the biggest mistakes that we made we have this one hit wonder kind of thing or we don't understand that business is built from trust business is built from relationships so when we are building ourselves we need to make sure we keep our relationship uh, for long term, not a short term. Great. Uh, I want to stop here because this is the last part of this and see if maybe I have, are there any questions? But also to, to say to you entrepreneurs, that is what the cause is about. Uh, and you it's gonna need a lot of commitment. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's gonna be hard work. Uh, you you can't do this in bypass. You're gonna be really be active in it. So what do we expect in terms of your commitment? Uh, I mean, one of the questions that was asked, in um, your recruitment process was, why do you think you should get awarded access to the program? And what difference will it make? Let me just say, 40% of you know what they want and why they're here. 60% have no clue. <laughs> and that was quite bad, that was sad. Because you see, when you don't know what you want, you will then not get it. Because you, don't, you are not clear in articulation of what is it that you want. So we need to be very clear. What do you want? We have told what this program is about. Do you still think you belong here? Do you still think you are ready for this? That's the question. And at best, what you should have done is to look at what we were offering and cut and paste there to say, that is why I want that. But somehow we, yeah, some, most of you said we wanted business skills. This is not a business skill course. <laughs> it's actually a, 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 a funding program, which is saying that each time when you are fi were finished with the module, you must have reached a, a specific step. You must have done something in your business to make yourself more attractive to the funders or to the people that are looking to fund entrepreneurs. And as I said, yeah, 40% of you, the answers were, were relevant, but the rest not relevant. We hope we're gonna panel beat um, we're going to panel beat what you, what, what you had in mind versus, but yeah, I, I don't know how we're going to come back from the 60%, but we'll see. This is a first cohort, so we're allowed to make mistakes, right? <laughs> yes, no, we are allowed to make mistakes. And yes, we all, yes, we allow them to make mistakes. There's a mistake now, even now, someone, the person who was writing and scribbling has, has has 
has confessed. <laughs> we forgive him. He says, no, I had whiteboard on and I'm busy. <laughs> so we forgive him. So if, if, if you want to remove the marks, you can stop sharing and then go back. They will come off. And okay. then awesome. here is a question. Yeah. Is there any working relations with enterprise development section of the private sector, which we could be linked to afterwards? There's a question from Kanisa. No, we do not have. This program is funded by a trust. They have been funding us for the past five years. This is our fifth year. So you are already in an enterprise development program by actually attending this for free. Uh, we don't have any linkage with anyone except the funders that we have confirmed that are gonna come on board to present what they are offering, but also for them to address the challenges that fund that when entrepreneurs are, are actually apply, applying, why they reject their application so that we work through that. And then and there, is a, there is a hand up, up. Um, Paul, Paul Masilo. Uh, <clears throat> good day. Um, just as a follow up to that question that has been asked, um, I'm not so sure if you guys are aware that there is um, enterprise supply development in Daba I think it's going to take place around uh, the month end of September. Uh, maybe you should look up uh, look it up so that you could uh, go and see if there could be opportunities that you could, you know, create some relationships. Yes, as much as the trust is there to back you up, I, I think it, it would be more interesting if you expand your <clears throat> your networks of linking, like what my colleague said, that um, besides the trust, maybe the trust is only funding up to the certain level of the program to give us the free access, you know. But maybe it will be an addition for you to go and look at what the enterprise supply development in Daba is offering, you know, that you could tap into it, you know, and see if you can benefit maybe us or maybe the next cohort, you know, that I think that would be very interesting, just as a thought, you know, in, especially in follow up to my colleague's contribution. Not yeah, thank, thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, we, we will consider that we do have uh, partners, or should I say clients, that are in the finance space. We just have not been funded by them for this program. So, but we'll see. Um, our role as, um, as JD, as I think, let me just share that again, what we do so that because again, um, it is important as entrepreneurs that we don't spread ourselves too thin to different things, right? <laughs> and focus on what do we do the best and let others work on things. Where is it? Yeah. There we go. So that is our offering as GAD. That is what we do. So what maybe I can put as a challenge for you guys is to find us the enterprise development programs that can fund the next group, right? That can fund the next group. Plus also maybe someone that can also do the mentorship over the 12 weeks because, um, and that is will then build a one-on-one -on -one because it based on what we have analyzed, we have picked up that it seems like you will need a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and yet we had not costed the one-on-one -on, -one on the 100. We had costed it only on the top 20. So from the 100, we estimated that the top 20 will be ready for us to do one-on-one. -on -one. So that is um, what we do. Uh, and thank you so much. And I will then move on to the next item. Can, can I also... Um, maybe there's an organization called the National Mentorship Movement. They they, they provide a lot of um, um mentors, you know, for for businesses for free. 
maybe look them up also and try and book up, you know, since you're saying, you know, there are hundreds of us, you know, that would need maybe mentorship, you know, um, that, 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 no problem. Really we definitely have reached out to business. We work with, um, uh, Ibasa, which is business, uh, advisors. So right. we have reached out to them, right? <laughs> so yes, we'll definitely do. Thank you so much. Okay. So entrepreneurs, what do we expect from you? Uh, you will have a, a group coaching for 30 minutes where we're having questions and answers, and then you will have one hour for the mastermind group, which is a group of 10. We expect you that you should have spent at least 40 hours over this period. You will have a maximum of average of 12 hours recorded sessions, uh, virtual uh, systems. As I said, we are gonna also add another content uh, and then we'll build the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And this, as I said, is actually for those that we really believe they are actually almost ready. Some of you have already sent some of your things. I think Fatima, you are one of them to say, Precious, please have a look at this. The deadline is this time. So we are already reviewing those. Please get yourself ready. Please participate in your group uh, peer-to-peer sessions and also assess the content. Uh, we will also make sure that each time when you submit your, your, your assignments, all your assignments, we give you some sort of gifts and awards. Uh, we will have 12 gifts, different gifts. Some of them will be templates. Some of them will be purely just access to somebody. Some of it will be uh, also just saying thank you to the top entrepreneurs that will have applied themselves uh, and also the best students. So the best student is really basically um, the persons who ask the questions, quality questions. It's someone who had prepared. We're always gonna be able to assess that out. Um, and also we will have uh the assignments six assignments each time when you submit your assignments we're gonna bribe you and give you something great so yeah we can't wait to actually play that game <laughs> we have all the bribes in the world to keep you engaged now we want to just talk about the certification we will issue the certification of attendance please make sure you use your first name and your last name all the time when you are joining the group don't change and then today you are precious tomorrow policy and the other day you the other day you no stick with one word because that also help us to track the attendance register that also make sure that we are managing and then at the end when we actually issue the certificate we need to reconcile back to say how many sessions did you attend how many assignments did you submit da, da, da. and that is how the program will then run please we will also build up a, a student number between now and next week and with the date of birth we already got your id numbers okay uh the certification will only be issued if you have attended 60 and we had reduced this, it was 80%, but we also know that there's lot shading. So we are saying 60% is fine, but if you are unable to attend, you need to go to the recorded session of the, on the YouTube, like it, share it, and leave us the comment. That is how we're going to prove that you did listen to it, right? And we also thought that instead of submitting... Hello, um, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, you have to raise your can hand. Can I ask a question? Yes, you have to raise your hand so that no one can know your hand. And, yeah, hi, your... Sylvia. Yeah, I did uh, ask a question. I see there is uh, on the objectives, there's something about the seven C's. If uh, Precious can just explain that seven C's to us, uh, because there was another lady or, uh, who also asked for that uh, explanation. Okay, so we will uh, we will articulate and cover that on week one. To, for today, we're just okay. outlining what will be the cause outline. So, and the material, Denise, okay. have already loaded it. So it will be there on your content. 
It's a basically a system that the banks use to evaluate whether you are worth the money that they that you are asking for. And it's the one that is used across board. Even the grant funders, they, they use that too. Okay, so assignments, you, you are expected to submit four. There's six assignments, at least four, so yeah. So we are not being too harsh, right? We are very nice people. And the value of the program is 25,000. So just remember the spot that you have is actually taking a spot of someone. Remember, 358 participants wanted to be here. So just keep that in mind. Now, for any project that you articulate, that you start, you need to do some sort of a risk assessment. And I think we as entrepreneurs, we have to foresee this because it does happen. We need to do what could go wrong. Load shading, we've already spoken about load shading and we also have put a system in place. We'll record all the sessions, we'll back them up, we'll make sure myself and I are simultaneously recording and we will then back it up and then share the link with you. When you do have your load, your load shading on your side, you need to then prepare afterwards. Uh, we will also try to make sure that the presentation and the content is made available to you. You might actually lose hope and motivation during the session. Uh, you're gonna need to ask yourself what motivates you. Is it pain or pleasure? To some of us is pain, to some of us is pleasure. Which, which one is your medicine? That will get you like waking up and then say, I am not gonna sleep until this assignment is done. Um, but I also think a purpose, the reason why, is actually one of the things that should drive you. So when you have lost purpose or you have lost uh, some sort of a vision, uh, and you've lost some, some sort of a, 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 a motivation, just remember those three things, pain, pleasure, and also your papers. And again, maybe you are the person who start things and not finish things, yeah? Uh, and there are people like that, they start things excited. Today we have 65, so we literally have 65%. We know on week 13 of this program, there'll be at least 10 people. <laughs> Why? Because people lack the uh, the perseverance to finish what they start. You wanna commit to say, I am. This is the last program. Actually, we are so close to the year end. This is the only program that I wanna see on my list of the things that I have done. So finish what you start. If you're having a challenges on that, maybe you can use an affirmation that says I finish what I start. And you say that affirmation all the time as one of the, of the things that you can do. But you can also get to your, your group, make sure that in your mastermind groups, you hold each other accountable, you follow each other's assignment, you read each other's assignments before we even start outside of our formal uh, engagement. So build a team around you to hold you accountable. Maybe the cause is not meeting your expectation. Uh, uh, as I said, 40% when we were reading seem as though they were not sure what this is about. So yeah, it might happen. So how do you manage that? How do you make sure that your expectations are met? You need to articulate them. You need to come back to me, say, Precious, this is what I expected. This is what you have provided. There is a gap missing there. How can you meet my expectation? We're here to serve you. We don't exist without you. So we're here to help in any way we can. Uh, and then you found that you, you found, you, you did find what you were looking for. Maybe in that process, you did find a funder. Somebody funded you during that process. You then thought, you know what? I don't need this. Uh, and in that case, there's no problem that you found the funder, but the problem is you have not been able to create a system. You need to actually build a system that allows you that you can apply for funding any day, any day. You must, if after this program, any day, you must be ready to just send a link to the fund and say, here is my documents. And maybe you found the funding, but 
you wasted a lot of time because it takes a lot of time to put documents together. It might happen that you have given up on yourself on the goal. You're thinking this is too hard. Uh, again, you need to just reflect, look at it again and ask yourself, what does this mean? If I'm giving up now, what does that mean? What about the rest of the year? What about the next 12 months? What will that mean? You might actually have to think about how do you elevate your goal or your mission to be bigger than about yourself? Meaning you gotta need to ask yourself, what will this mean for me? What will this mean for my family? What will this mean for my community? What will that mean for my country? What will this mean for the world? So whenever, when you are finding yourself giving up on your goals and stuff, just make your goal to be bigger than you. So that when you are waking up and you are working through this, you no longer just working from what you will benefit, but you are looking at what the whole ecosystem will benefit because of you paying attention to these things that you are doing. So don't do something just for yourself. The last one. It might happen that you are you are you are exiting the program because you you the last module you just maybe the team or the, the stuff that we have covered you realize that actually you failed this is dismal you're gonna need to restart afresh you start not believing in yourself that you will actually finish this and you are able to do this uh, and that happens to all of us as I said I have failed nine times. I have felt uh, till today, I'm still failing in a whole lot of things. So it's really you understanding that failure is not the end. Failure is just telling you that you don't have enough principle, you don't have systems, you don't have processes in place to ensure that you actually can actually get this. Then that means you need to build up your capacity, you need to build up a belief system, first to make sure that your values and your capabilities are aligned and you also address your actions i see there is a lot of comments on the chat box i, I don't know if there's any questions on that system for you yeah people are saying they are ready they are excited uh, <laughs> uh, zolisa is saying she needed to hear this She's so worried. She's so worried because she joined late, but she really needed to hear this. Uh, Zolisa, just know that this will be on YouTube, on YouTube, so you will be able to catch up. Uh, Fatima is saying she wants the systems. She wants the certificate. Yes. Um, Stephen is saying that's what he has been looking for. And he's very grateful to join the program. So people think they are ready. And we believe that uh, what they say, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see. The results shall talk, not the words. What mm -hmm. will show up is the action. Mm -hmm. Yeah? OK. Uh, so what is your responsibility? I think as we get to this three things as black entrepreneurs, we forget that we are where we are right now because somebody, somebody sacrificed their lives, sacrificed, and, and not just their lives, their livelihood, their families uh, were actually part of this. So I just wanted to bring this home to you to be reminded. This is one of the famous uh, photos <laughs> for 2016. Uh, and I know the brother of the photographer personally. Uh, so this is very close to my heart. I need you to remember whatever that you do as an entrepreneur, you are representing everyone, including some of your ancestors that actually suffered to get us to where we are. And the only way as black people, we're gonna get better and build ourselves is that if we remember where we come from and what do we need to do to actually get things done. I do want you to also remember that there is still racism. It doesn't matter what abilities we have sometimes as black people, what qualifications we have. 
we knock on doors with all the papers, right? <laughs> and we're still having our doors being closed in our, because we don't have the right skin. We don't have the right uh, articulation. Uh, we're not speaking, uh, you know, a whole list of things that they can find that is wrong with us. What I need you to understand, you should focus on your strength and your strength as a black entrepreneur is the numbers the, the and also is a collaboration with each other. And never look at life in a silo-minded, look at your challenges that you're facing and say, maybe somebody, by me succeeding in this, it will then help my community. By me doing better, it will show and demonstrate to the whole world that I can, I, a black person can do. So that for me, this is one of the things that I generally push myself to say, um, when I fail, it means all the entrepreneurs that have attended the causes that I've ran, the, the, if I give up. So I then feel that responsibility to say, I can't give up. I cannot give up. <laughs> I am carrying people on my shoulders that, and because somebody has carried me, somebody has carried me. So just remember in your last day when you are quitting, when you decide I'm not gonna do the assignment, just remember this picture. <laughs> wow, precious. I was actually at school with Umbuisa. Really? Uh, oh, yes, wow. yes. Um, and we were in a dance club together. And that was all before he sacrificed his life. Wow. Oh, Sister mm. Mbuyo, that is just, yeah, that is mm. just. Okay, now I'm crying. Okay. <laughs> okay I was that's... crying too, yes. So, so I think it's important, and I'm just repeating what you said. It's, I, I'm very proud that, um, for for hearing you say what you've just said and you've said do let it mean more than just yourself let it be more than what is let it be more than just you and that's where purpose comes from let it be for a higher goal than yourself and and you spoke of the burning desire and let that goal be the burning desire that pushes you. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. And I just wanted just to highlight that a struggle of a black person is literally everywhere in the world, <laughs> you know? So we, when we fail as South Africans, black South Africans, we're just not even failing as just South Africans, we're failing as black people in general. Our people live in places that are appalling. And, I, and the reason why we don't have sufficient eco, eco, economic development, we don't have credible politicians, is because we as individuals have allowed people like that to lead us. We are not ourselves accountable. Because we personally are not accountable for our actions, we then cannot hold anybody accountable. We gotta need to build that up within ourselves, and that's the only way we will actually uh, succeed as Black people. So its commitment is equal to responsibility, and that is gonna give you the result. Just remember, you are because of me. I am because of you. I can only succeed if you succeed. We have to hold each other accountable to those values. Now, how are we going to break ourselves from poverty? How are we literally going to just like change our lives right now? I'm talking about right now, not tomorrow, not, not next week. I'm meaning right now. We're going to be generous. We're not going to have greed. As entrepreneurs, we have a tendency of only just receiving and not giving. Find a way to serve others. Find ways to being a giver. Because when you are a giver, you are actually a receiver. You are going to get the money that you're worth, but are you giving enough? You will also sometimes tend to be jealous. Eh? 
when we see other people's success and, and feel anxious about it and then and not instead of blessing the person, celebrating, and then as a result, that jealous hold back your success. Because when you are looking at other people's success, you see it as an end. I mean, I see it all the time. Other people, the way they will approach. So maybe someone is commenting on on, on, on Twitter or whichever in, in social media. And then another black person will say, you are replying from privilege. Yet that person does not know where you come from. But we have that thing of, as black people, of putting people in some groups and classes. We are not a class. Whoever that separated us to be a class doesn't understand the level of consciousness that we're supposed to have for us to build a right economic growth that is inclusive of everyone. The moment you see yourself as outside of the group, you're not gonna play in that group. You're gonna automatically exclude yourself. We also have egos. We, we we pretend all the time. We first pretend and lie to ourselves. We 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 have egos. We 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 are not true with ourselves. We are also not true with uh, other people. And it's so obvious all the time. You ask uh, Ninja and CRP, uh, how are you doing? I'm okay. And yet you are not okay. You need to start being honest with how you communicating in yourself, within yourself, plus also how you communicating to the universe. When you tell the universe you are okay, when you are flat broke, you 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 having a heart attack each time your, your phone goes with the SMS telling it's low balance. You are accepting what is not should not be acceptable. You are telling the universe that you are okay with that. And I think that is one of the things we've got to need to let go of. The ego, surrendering to it and accepting what it is and, and really have a way of paving your, your, the way you wear your circumstances so that you can fix it. Because when you keep on pretending that things are okay, then your bank balance is not going to change. The people that you attract around you are not going to change because you are pretending as though you are okay, whereas you are not okay. Uh, integrity, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even wanna start with this one, <laughs> you know? I don't wanna start with, with this one. We need to understand that when you, when you are not honest in your dealings, you are not having integrity. You are falsifying information. You're trying to manipulate the system. You are manipulating yourself. When the due diligence is being done, the audit is being done, I will tell you the tricks of the book. But your aim should not be trying to get the tricks done, but is to get to see where is inconsistent. Because it's those inconsistencies that will make the funder say, uh-uh, this person is doge. This person is not telling the truth. And then they, they, are out, they pull up their hands and say, no, I can't fund this person. So you got to need to be transparent and honest and have integrity in all your dealings. Understand that a winner does not take all. A winner looks at things and say, what is a win-win situation? A winner does not take it all. If you that is a quote you have had in some social media or somewhere, that's not how business are run. That's how. That's not how relationships are done. Understand when someone gives you the money, it is the, about trust. It is about trust. That's all it is. They are trusting that your word and what you have signed up for, you will live up to. But they are not going to trust you when you don't trust yourself. When you don't commit to things and finish what you start, when you run things and then make things a mess, you know, a whole list of things. I mean, I've had other entrepreneurs that will say, no precious, I have financial statements for receive of revenue. I have financial statements for my bank. What is that? <laughs> right. <laughs> they, they can't be. They can't be financial statement for the same organization. 
There are ways you can do this right. There are ways that you can't do it right. And you can't have two sets of financial statements because one day you will think you send the right one and then you send the wrong one. Boom, a bomb. You know, things that happen behind doors always comes up. So just remember that. Okay, last one, accountability. Yo, this is a big one. You must hold yourself accountable for your decision and the action and the result of where you are right now. You are where you are now, not because of apartheid, not because of the systems that are there, because some have made it without those things. They've made it in spite of apartheid, in spite of the structural systems, which then means when you don't take accountability, you then are not taking a responsibility for your life. So we need to be responsible for our decisions, our action and the results we have generated and not blame anybody. We can't point a finger at any, all the fingers must be pointing to us. I had a target that by now our business will have generated, I think about uh, 3.5 million by now. But I was sitting with Denise and we we're doing your sales projections. We are nowhere close to that. And I realized that I was busy with other things and not focusing on sales. And um, I realized that I needed more support. I needed to work with more people. And I said to her, Denise, you better start making appointments every week because these sales look horrible. Why? Because at the end of the day, I am responsible for my decision and the action and the result. The taking of accountability, it means you take the, the accountability whether something is good or whether something is bad. That is what we call leadership. That is leadership. And in our country, we really have a problem of lack of accountability. But we as entrepreneurs are leaders ourselves and we are gonna be accountable to ourselves. And some of you are struggling with this because you are also shareholders and directors, right? There's no board, you yeah, CEO, yeah, shareholder. So I want you to use the mastermind groups that we are, we're gonna create to help you to be accountable, to help you to deliver on what you promise. Be embarrassed when you say, I have not done it because the expectation you should have done it, right? Uh, uh, and I want you to also understand being an entrepreneur means you must learn to multitask. And there are lots and lots of tools that can help you to actually multitask. So, yeah, so that is how I see it. This is how we're gonna break away from poverty because it's really a poverty of mind. It's a poverty of accepting the circumstances even though they shouldn't be accepted. It shouldn't be right that we should be broke. We shouldn't achieve our sales goals. We shouldn't achieve the things we have set for ourselves. So I'm here and um, I'm here to encourage you to take that accountability. And we're gonna create systems to allow you to be accountable. Okay, so now we need your help. Remember I spoke about, we're gonna need to serve others. The only way we serve others is to help others to actually join the program. So you are the first cohort that we have started with. Whether this is gonna turn out to be a great program in the world or the worst program in the world, God knows. <laughs> we have tried our level best to make it the best we can based on the resources we have. Please participate in our social media, share what did you learn, uh, take your target financiers and investors and funders, invite at least five entrepreneurs to join fund ready community, post your notes, teach others what you have implemented. We need another 1,500 for the next 12 months to enroll on this program because we want to make this program the program that all the funders use to guide them where the challenges we kind of feel they have this product, great product that they've created, but this product that they've created and the money they tell us about is not addressing the challenges we have as entrepreneurs. We want them to change their product to suit our environment. They can't just cut and paste what they bought in London or wherever where they bought it. It has to suit our South African environment. It has to suit our needs. And, that, and the only way we can influence them is through our numbers. So please uh, 
that is what we will request from you in exchange of 25,000. Is that worth the 25,000? I think if you do your part, I think we can do it. And yes, for each session, please provide a feedback. Uh, um, we're gonna create some sort of a questionnaire that is like a poll on the WhatsApp. Please uh, make sure you, you use that and do it immediately after the session. If you didn't attend the session, don't worry about it. Give us a feedback on the uh, 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 on the uh, the Twitter thing. So, some of you, it was very clear when I was going through some of the content that you have provided that there is a need for transformation. There is a need for us to build a system to change any situations that we are actually at. And I just want to share one or two points of things. Uh, that uh, I think has helped me and has also helped the entrepreneurs that I've worked with closely. We need to use some sort of a system on how we're going to change our lives. And the only way you can actually change where you are and who you are, we need to look at our environment. You see, when you go from the environment, which is the bottom of this, it's easy and you move up. But you also, it's very hard when you're moving from the top, which is spiritually turned down. So I would like you to consider doing them simultaneously together. Look at your, at your environment. Where you are, when are you doing the things that need to be done? Who is around you? Who's your top five friends? Are they broke like you? Because may, maybe that's a problem, <laughs> right? <laughs> if the friends you have, you are more richer than them, you are in the wrong WhatsApp group. If the people you talk to all the time are always complaining about where this economy is going, uh, you are in the wrong WhatsApp. You should be in a WhatsApp where there is opportunities. Number two, uh, I, I also need you to think about Look at the results in that environment. Look at the results and the outcome that you have achieved. What is it telling you? Some of you are in such an environment where you, you are seen as a leader within your community. But is that the result you want for yourself? Do you have a bigger, bigger a vision for your life? Because you can't let your environment limit where you want to go. Now, what behaviors that you are demonstrating? What's your thought process? What's your physical action? I can tell you 65% of you, other than those that are stuck with load shedding, you are going to make it. I can see it from the first day we have quite, a, I was expecting 40% of people to be here, but I think your action are already speaking to that. Now, that behavior, can you sustain it? How are you gonna make sure that you create an environment that sustain that, that you are consistent? What are the skills do you need to have? Because the skill is gonna tell you how you're gonna do the thing. Whereas the action is gonna be what you need to actually do. I also want you to connect with the values. What really matters to you? What is your why? What's your purpose? I spoke about that earlier. What do you believe in? What is important to you? I've already articulated what is important to GAD, what is important to this team that has created this program. So what is important to you? Because that is what's gonna keep you going. Who are you? Do you know who you are? What role do you play? How does that influence your values and your belief? And I always say to entrepreneurs that when you know who you are, when you know who you are, you cannot be uh, devalued by the system. You cannot be devalued by anybody because you know who you are, what you stand for. And that for me comes your spiritual upbringing. And that could be Allah, God, whatever, your ancestors, it could be anything. It's about understanding that you exist because of those things and you stand in to fill a specific purpose that you had designed just for yourself. So I more for you that you're gonna need to connect those dots for you to be able to change your life and the aspect of your life 
And as we're going through this program, those are the things we're going to be talking about. I really believe that for us to grow your business, we have to grow you first. Because if you take yourself to the boardroom. Because you're the one who make the decision. It's not the business. And the only way we can do that is when you address all those seven areas. And it's a hard work. It's everyday work. It's literally every day you're going to need to be working on it. And that is why I want you to limit your goal to at least four goals. Don't go beyond four because when you go beyond four, yeah, you can go to tutors. Eh? And in that process, as I said, you have to know who you are, your ideal self, your social self. How do you want others to see you? How do you want others to expect you? How do you, how do you want others to feel and see about yourself? All those things are important because sometimes we have this persona that is only just suitable for certain circumstances. Or maybe when it appears though we know what to do. Or when it appears though we, we are actually doing okay. We need to ask ourselves, who am I? How am I showing up? Is that how I want to show up? Uh, I usually say that for the past three years, I honestly want to show up as a 32, 30, 70 kg, 32 weight waste. <laughs> but it has not happened. So that's the ideal self. It's not the actual self. But does that take my personality? Does that take into account my value? No. The fact that I'm, I'm 10 kg heavier than I want does not mean my value is is less. So you really need to look at things when you're not achieving your goals. Don't value you not achieving a goal as a failure or devaluing yourself, but see it as an area for you to grow. I'm almost done. I know this was a long session. I'm almost done. <laughs> I needed to do this foundation. So when you look and changing your life, as I said earlier, it takes a lot. I is your identity. Can or cannot do is really relating to your belief system. Your belief system is aligned to your values. But understand that when your belief system and the values does not serve you, it's not worth keeping. Your capability is really about the do. Remember, it's about how you're going to do what needs to be done. The behavior is that, that thing that you actually are supposed to be doing and the environment is here i can't do that here it is really around those three uh six levels that i mentioned in here okay so take away i can't say i can i'm in the process of learning it and getting it there shouldn't be anything that as an entrepreneur you feel uncomfortable with i mean some of you will say pressure is all mere numbers no, 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 it's just nine numbers. They mean absolutely nothing. Nine, nine, nothing else. Nine numbers. And I will show you the tricks and the understanding to help you to have a shorter learning span on how to understand the numbers. But the most important thing is you understanding what those numbers mean and what, the, and what decisions need to be made. And that is what matters. You are a decision maker. You have to understand what those numbers mean. Okay, so uh, in explaining this, as I said, uh, I've already explained the role, the identity, the beliefs, the mission, the motivation, the skill set. Because remember, on the skill set is really about how, but sometimes the behavior informs the skill set. When you don't know much about something, you might actually do the wrong thing, i.e., your habits and your actions. But the the skills and capability will then correct that. That is why it's important to. Always look at your capability in relation to your behaviors. Like, for example, you can't keep on attending AMA calls and your behavior does not change. Maybe in, in a previous enterprise development program, you attended and you were doing finance with me. And we said you must have financial statements. And you come to this program, you still don't have financial statements. Then you are not learning. Your capability and your behavior is not changing. It has to change. Because if then it doesn't change, this, this time or this 25,000 rent is worth nothing. This program is about you changing your life. It's you changing your behavior, you changing your environment so that you can fulfill your vision. You can fulfill your ultimate goal. 
but this is going to need you to change your belief, change the identity, how you see yourself and how you want others to see you. And if you're not willing to do those changes, you are not worth the money you are looking for. That's it. You're definitely not worth the money you're looking for. Uh, okay, so I've already explained this in quite detail. I was just giving you more so that you understand that every environment provides opportunities and constraints. A behavior is the action, is what needs to be done, but it also could be a reaction. Your capability does not just talk about your skills and your experience, it also talks about your emotion, your intellect, how you interpret information. And as I said earlier, your, your belief and values is your why, it's your motivation. It provides you a permission to act in a certain way. And then who you are, the role you wanna play, it's about a mission, the role you wanna play in the society. But that must be informed by your ambition, your vision and the purpose, the reason why you exist. And that is how we will build yourself up. Okay, I am done. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I'm sorry. This was a very long presentation, but I wanted to cover that foundation because when we start, I will focus on the content, not so much on the personal development. And I wanted you guys to have these tools now so that you can see how you can change. Remember the risk assessment allows you then to deal with some of the things that I'm mentioning uh, on how you can actually change here. Okay, thank you so much. Um, are there any questions or comments? What have you taken? What are you taking from this? Please put your in your comments here. What are you taking from, from this powerful, powerful session? What are you taking? Fatima is saying she's taking that she needs to find out, participate. Oh, can participate? Can we still take other people? I think for the next, next, the next one is in January. Please get invite them for January, but still invite them to 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 join the community, even if they are only going to start attending in January. Let them join the community. Okay, so Njabulo is saying, this was both enlightening and thought provoking. Yes. What are you taking out the question? Yes, it was enlightening. Yes, it was thought provoking. But what are you taking? Pumanani. Pumanani. <laughs> what are you taking? Um. Participation is key. Yes, Noabisa. You are taking the essence, the essence that participation is key if you are going to change your circumstances. Wonderful. Participation is key. Um, thanks, Christoph. I just Christoph has just shared the, the program links again. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> you are willing uh, to I'm... learn. Okay. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, yeah. So are we closing now? Um, yes, we started at half past. It's uh, we're supposed to close now at six. And mm -hmm. as I said, I apologize for taking longer. I really wanted to express uh, how we're gonna do this, and but also give you some sort of a baseline on when you're stuck, what what tools to use and where to use it. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, and I cannot wait to work with all of you. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah, I think if there are no questions, we can close. And thank you so much uh, for attendance. This was a great attendance. I didn't expect it, and I really, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Well thank done, you. guys. Attitude and fear towards numbers is gone. <laughs> gone. Okay. So <laughs> So what I'm going to do, 
please share on the WhatsApp group where there's discussion, your issues, either the reasons why previously you have failed, but also your biggest challenges in your business, share those on the WhatsApp. I will then create separate videos to address some of those matters uh, outside of the program. There is a hand from uh, Gabi. Gabi. Yeah. Please Gabi. come through. And mute yourself. Okay. Uh, good evening. Yeah, yes. my question about is, uh, you, you said uh, there's a supporting document for business plan. So could you please share the link where we can do, because I'm doing the business plan for service business. I'm not do, longer doing the product. So I'm not sure that the business plan for service and product are more similar when you do financial forecast and projection. Thank you. No problem. So the templates and will be shared on per week. However, Gabi, I just want to articulate it doesn't matter whether you are you are doing um, a business plan for a product versus for um, a service. It's the same principle. Uh, the only difference is that the other one is really uh, a service, a professional service. Uh, but again, we will work through with you and provide you with on the week where we are actually going through that. Thank you. Uh, Samuel, Samuel also has a question. Someone... Uh, would you please... Oh, there's someone Thanks. else on the question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Um, I joined a bit late due to load shedding. Um, I wanted to find out um, as to whether, where do we get the program, as to when are we meeting and all those kind of things. Okay, so that is on your notice, on your WhatsApp notice. Uh, you have two WhatsApp groups. There's a notice board and there's a way you can put your comment, which is participant. So it's on both. Uh, Christoph, keep so on sharing it. It's all there. You just follow the links for the schedule. Samuel? Yeah, so we, that was Samuel. I think we have exhausted the questions. And uh, Christoph has also just shared here in the, in the group again, yeah. in the chat. Okay, we have, we are having people joining. Hey, can you believe yeah, it? Yeah, we're actually finishing. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, goodbye for now. Uh, we will we will share the the poll. We just want to have the feedback from you, but we really appreciate all your hard work and thank you so much for making the time for today. And good luck to all of you. Uh, we will get this money. Uh, we will at least we'll die trying. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye guys bye guys bye. Uh, bye. what a wonderful bye. session bye bye yes. well done thank you thank you bye. thank you so much bye. thank you bye, bye.